Uh, it is five o'clock, and I am calling our special select board meeting to order. Um, and we have Sarah Seedman on the Zoom and Bridget on the Zoom. We have Dorinda here and and Bridget on the Zoom. Don't let me forget Bridget. And uh, I think is that your wife on the Zoom, Jay Drury? I'm assuming so. Yes. <laughs> and there's other people. There's below other that. people down below. Okay, I can't see him. Oh. Can you read it? Thank you. Paul Sermonera. Yeah. PCEO. Who is PCEO? Can that you need their names, right? Only if they talk, right? Oh, only, only if they, only they talk. talk. Only okay, only if you talk. Shelley. Yeah. Steve. Jufre. Sandy Levine. I think that's it. Eleven participants. Okay, the there's Sandy. She just popped up. Okay. Does somebody need to monitor that? Yeah, I'll sit here. Me? That'd be well, great. I, I have, uh, Liz, I have the controls over here. Oh, you do? Yeah. Okay. So are, do you see the same thing as? Yeah, I, I'm letting it in. Oh, okay. Do you want me to just move the controls over to you? Right. No, okay. unless you want, I mean, can you oh. take notes and control at the same time? Yeah. Okay. We need to, uh, approve the agenda of tonight's special meeting. Um, I do have two amendments to the agenda. Uh, first of all, I'd like to recognize Sarah, who has a few prepared remarks for us. And Sarah. then uh, I have Sarah a few who? prepared remarks. Our town clerk, our select board assistant. Yes. And I have a few prepared remarks, not really prepared, but a few remarks before we start the uh, general discussion of the meeting. So with that, are there any other amendments to the agenda? Is there a motion to accept the agenda? I'll move that. Thank you, Randy. Second? I'll second. Thank you, Liz. It's been moved and seconded. All those in favor of accepting that agenda, please say aye or raise your hand. Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, we've accepted the agenda. Thank you very much. So, uh, Sarah. Yes. You're up. All right, I wrote this down. It's 5.1 minutes. I'll try to speak clearly. In fact, I think I'll stand. So this is written with the best of intentions. Just want to remind the board of where you were two years ago and how much you've achieved. You've governed through a pandemic and labor shortages that would have disabled other communities. Instead, you came together and found solutions in these darkest of times. The Highway Department. If you'll recall, our longtime road foreman surprised everyone by resigning in the fall of 2020, and what followed was pretty turbulent. A road foreman lasted only 18 months. A member of the road crew retired. Another died. Remaining members of the road crew showed up at select board meetings frequently to gripe. And they weren't the only ones complaining. I lost count of how many times I had to ask residents to be patient with the roads because the town was facing an epic labor shortage. You made some smart decisions, starting with bringing on Vic as the road commissioner and pairing him with Gary Lamel to work as a shared road foreman. You increased the pay for the highway department and offered to pay for CDL training and qualifications. Fast forward to today. Eric is coming up on his year anniversary as the road foreman and the roads are in the best shape they've ever been. The phone never rings with complaints. Instead, people stop me in the grocery store to praise the road conditions and Eric's responsiveness. The road crew is at full capacity and staffed by almost all Middlesex residents. The one Montpelier member lives literally on the border. If they're grumbling, the board doesn't hear about it. Gone are the select board therapy sessions for the road crew. Any town would love to be in this position. The fire department. In February of 2021, the town hit a low when the historic Methodist church across the street was obliterated by a fast moving fire. Responding fire departments in nearby communities complained to the board about our fire department's response. 
it's no secret that until then, relations between the select board and the fire department were tense. Peter figured out that regular communication might go far toward improving this important relationship. And so monthly meetings with the MVFD began. And this January, the MVFD was welcomed into the town family as an official department. The monthly updates are enlightening, morale is up, and so is the fire department's membership. All because instead of throwing up your hands, you took action. The Budget Committee. Once upon a not too distant time, the Budget Committee consisted of a group of citizens who attended a few select board meetings and basically rubber stamped the board's annual budget proposal. Now the Budget Committee meets throughout the year and maintains a capital improvement plan. A capital improvement plan. Never before has the town inventoried its assets and calculated their depreciation and replacement costs. This happened because responsive board members like Liz listened to the concerns of the voters at the 2020 town meeting and applied for grants that kick-started the process. Today, Randy chimes in regularly whenever a purchase comes up to check with the capital plan. This kind of forethought and coordination will have a positive effect long after we're gone from this town hall. Listers, in the spring of 2022, I wasn't sure how we were going to come up with the grant list. Fortunately, the board made the wise decision to hire Nemrick to do the 2022 appraisals. We would have been in the tank were it not for that decision. Shelley and Annette apply, applied and were thrown into the deep end that spring. Amazingly, they immersed themselves into this top job, reaching out to the state, attending numerous trainings, and practically memorizing the listers' handbook. When property owners come in to ask questions about their appraisals, our listers extend themselves to be helpful and courteous, and folks leave satisfied. Zoning. Kevin Thompson, coming up on his three-year anniversary this fall, has been a zoning administrator par excellence. He reviews new applications every week. He tries to assist without over-assisting prospective applicants. He works well with the DRB, which now meets, if necessary, on a set day, the last Wednesday of the month. Their hearings are professionally run. Their decisions are timely, fair, and thoughtful. Gone are the days of delays. Zoning is often the first interaction new residents have with this town, so having a smart, capable ZA like Kevin is downright blessing. Finally, we come to the financial department. By the fall of 2021, the town office was decimated. The bookkeeper, who was also a lister, quit. The assistant clerk, who was also a lister, quit. Thank God Dorinda had the necessary bookkeeping skills and knowledge of municipal finances, not to mention the dedication to keep the town afloat. Somehow, she managed to pay the bills, write up the orders, and do payroll in between her other jobs, including putting together a budget and handle November tax payments. Today, because you, the select board, came together and agreed to increase the pay for town employees, we were able to hire a top-notch bookkeeper, an assistant clerk who's also a town resident. This office is a well-run machine with checks and balances, organization, and pleasant communication. The annual auditor sang the praises of Cheryl and Dorinda, and rightly so. We are damn lucky to have them. Just ask Callis. You have a lot to be proud of. So does the treasurer who assisted the board with many of these tough decisions. You are truly dedicated public servants, and you should be commended. You, the board, and you, the treasurer, deserve the utmost respect. You deserve to be treated with respect by the public, by the employees of this town, and most importantly, by one another. Thank you. Uh, so before we begin uh, the regular discussion, uh, first of all, I would like to apologize to the other board members and especially uh, Dorinda for the chaos at the last meeting. I did not impose the control I should have on that meeting and I think we all agree things got out of hand and I hope that won't happen in the future. Um, I would suggest, and, and Sarah has provided us with yet another copy of our rules of procedure, uh, there are a couple of things that I think we need to do. Uh, and I'm, I'm more than willing to listen to what other people think. But I think one of the things we definitely need to do is when you want to speak, raise your hand, wave your hand, do something to ask to be recognized. Just don't start talking and don't respond uh, to other board members of the, or members of the public directly. If I fail to recognize you, and sometimes I may not see somebody out of the corner of my eye, other board members or 
others at the meeting can remind me that somebody wants to be uh, wants to be recognized. But I really think that is an important element to bring uh, good order and decorum uh, to our meetings. Uh, the other suggestion that I have, and we don't have to decide this tonight, but Dorinda and I had a conversation this week, and one of the things that I've been concerned about for a while is it is very challenging to come to a board meeting at 4.30 in the evening, and we're all passing the orders back and forth, trying to review them and have a chance to review them before we sign them. In the not-so-distant days, the procedure was that uh, orders would be emailed at least 24 hours before the meeting. So we had an opportunity to uh, look over the orders, call and ask questions if we had questions, and we didn't spend time at the board meeting worrying about the orders unless there was something exceptional. What that means is that uh, the different organizations in town need to submit their bills and their payroll, what, Dorinda, a day earlier, two days earlier? We have to have it on 9 a.m. You know, when Cheryl gets here on Monday morning. So 9 a.m. on Monday morning of the, of the days there is, a, there is a payroll. That way Cheryl can prepare the orders, she can email them out to us. We have a chance to review them and that will eliminate confusion and some of the back and forth questions and issues uh, at the board meetings, it'll also allow uh, board members to contact either either Dorinda or whoever it is if they have a, a question or concern uh, about a bill. So I'm proposing, we don't need to decide that tonight, but I'm proposing that we do that. Lastly, uh, I just want to emphasize that over the years, for the most part, and almost always, we have managed to deal with the town's business in an appropriate, calm, and reasonable way. We don't attack each other personally. We don't get involved in three-way conversations. We don't introduce hearsay about what members of the community are saying about us or about other members of the board or other town officers. We conduct the town's business at our select board meetings, and that's what we should be doing. And I am going to be more diligent about stopping those uh, conversations if they start to occur, uh, and just more diligent, if I can be, in uh, running the meetings in a more orderly fashion. So uh, with that, I'll open up the meeting to the other board members, and uh, we can deal with our situation. Yes, Liz. Um. So I was thinking about this procedure of the chair recognizing people speaking. And I'm wondering if the reality is that in order for us to be effective, there is going to be conversations that happen, right? Like somebody may think of something that's like, oh, yeah, I'm thinking of that too. And then I might make a comment and Vic might make a comment. And those things are natural ways that meetings are run. It's not entirely natural to be like, okay, I have a thought, I have to wait to be able to say it, and I need to want to respond to just in a, you know, in, in a process of, it's, it's, it's not natural, right? So I'm wondering if we can think about your role as chair is to recognize when it's starting, when there may be a potential for a heated conversation or something that goes beyond the business at hand, right? Like, if we're just talking about roads and, and like, oh, but I thought it was blah, blah, blah. Like, I don't want to have to raise my hand to say, Peter, I thought it was blah, 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 right? Because I might forget that thought. I want us to be able to have a constructive meeting as a team of five people and feel like we can go back and forth in a conversation without having to be recognized by the chair in order to say a word but that it's your job, Peter, and that we as board members need to, when Peter says, okay, I need to rein this in, that we listen. Because if we don't, then we're gonna have to go to this process where we raise our hands to be able to say a word. No one's gonna wanna be on a board like that. It's not cohesive, it's not, 
it's not a community we're a community right like we're here to help our community members somebody like dorinda or um you know sarah you know you know, should be able to have a conversation around the things because these are very town related things so i think that that's what i'm asking is that we don't have this be so structured that we have to be recognized by you every time we want to say something now the people on who are not board members yes i believe that they should need to be recognized that they can't just chime in but if you're a board member or you're a part of you know and maybe we decide that sarah and dorinda have to ask because they're not board members um you know ask to say something but like i i feel like we actually work really well together until we don't and that's where your job as chair is to make sure that we don't get to that point because we're people right we're humans we have feelings we you know it's not you know we're we have relationships with each other so that's all i so I don't disagree with that. The problem is we need as a group, as a group and as community, to be polite and respectful to each other. Because what is not good is when people start interrupting each other, start talking over each other, you know, all that kind of stuff. As long as you wait for a pause in the conversation and then say something, I think that's fine. I mean, we've got a, we've got a long way to go in terms of formalizing our our meetings. So I'm not saying it has to be a hard and fast rule, but more than anything else, I want people to be respectful. If somebody's speaking, let them finish speaking. If there are multiple people who want to talk and they don't seem to be getting a chance, wave your hand and I'll recognize you and interrupt the other, the other person. Um, I, just, I just want to be sure that we can do the town's business in an orderly, polite, way and not with personal personal remarks and um, repetitions of hearsay from outside sources and things which cause problems and bad feelings. So I, th I think that's fine, Liz. And I think it's fine if, uh, if uh, Sarah and Dorinda want to operate on the same rules that the uh, select board is operating on. That makes sense to everyone? certainly does to me we'll try it i mean we can we can change it i mean i don't like you know i've always said one of the things i liked about our board meetings was that they were relatively informal and for the most part all the years this has worked so i don't want to have a knee-jerk reaction to uh to one situation but um it does mean we need to make a little a little change to the to our procedure so we're following our procedure. But I think that's fine. Other comments? Anyone? Randy? No, I would agree with Liz's take on that. And it really comes back to relying on the chair to step in and, and cut that stuff off. Um, because I do agree that having the fluid conversation um, and the back and forth, if it's done in the right manner and the right tone um, has its place and it allows for a more natural conversation but there's there are absolutely times where I believe that it's gonna come to a point where you know people have differing opinions on things and and it can't be a back and forth between whether it's two members of the board or the public and the board um, that's when there needs to be more directed conversation um, at, the, at that point. So I think, and it might not just be you, it might be somebody else on the board saying, okay, let's have a little bit more directed conversation here. Yeah. Yeah. So. Bridget? Muting. Um, I think that I think that all works fine. I agree with both you, Peter and Liz. Victor, I concur. Okay. Um, so the question is, uh, where that leaves us now? We have a uh, treasurer who has, I would say, informally resigned. 
but uh, maybe she's formally resigned. And uh, what do you have to add to this process, Dorinda? Well, I went away from last week's meeting very upset. I believe I was um, I was called out for doing my job as I was elected to do. Um, and this is not the first time. And I know we've been through these conversations before. And, you know, we go on a good track, and then something falls apart again. But um, these comments were made in front of my neighbors, my friends, the community that elected me. And I think it was very wrong. And yes, I have formally resigned. I've been asked to reconsider. And based on the actions of this meeting, I will do it from that. But I mean, I hope people understand what the role of the treasurer is. I believe we do more now than ever. And no, go on. Um, I just I, I want to reiterate too that our role, you know, as Brenda said, we're elected officials, right? And this is our role as like board members are to um, act in the best interests of the town, right? The town has entrusted us with money. It's entrusted us with taking care of the roads, with all of the daily things that you need to to run a town, and. There isn't much that we do as select board people, right? Like, I'm not running the roads, I'm not doing them, so what am I doing? My job is to listen, it's to do oversight, it's to ask questions, it's to make sure that things are being done correctly. That is that is our role. And, you know, a treasurer, by default, if they're not asking questions, if they're not going drilling down and, and and you know, really making sure that they understand what's going on. Maybe we call it a little nitpicky. Well, that's their job, right? If they're not, they're not, as far as I'm concerned, they're not doing their job, right? I would, you know, I think that, you know, somebody like Dorinda who is, who, who is asking the questions, that's great. I know that she's doing her job because she's making sure that everything is done properly. Same thing with Randy. Same thing with me looking at the orders, right? When I'm looking at those checks, I'm not looking to see, oh, is someone stealing money from the, the town? That's not what I'm doing. I'm looking to see, oh, has it been done properly? Oh, how much are we spending on, on sand or whatever, right? I'm becoming an informed person. I'm not just signing something. The same thing with Randy. I'm not going to go look at the hours if Randy's looking at the hours, right? I don't think we need 10 people looking at the hours. But that's that's our job, right? Is to make sure that we're stewards of the towns of, of our taxpayer dollars, right? And that's our job. And so Dorinda, I do hope you will reconsider because I think you do a fabulous job. You're important, you're needed for this town. You know the ins and outs and you do ask the hard questions, but that makes you the good treasurer that you are. And I'm sorry, and I, you know, I can't promise you that we're not gonna, that this isn't gonna happen again. I don't think any of us can promise that, but I can promise you that we as a board will work towards the goal of being kinder and more respectful and more professional and treating each other with, as Sarah said, the respect that we are all due because we are servants to this town. So that's all I have to say. Thank you. Anybody have anything else they'd like to add? Um, I don't. Okay, thank you. Um, Dorinda, what would be the process to implement that with the orders if we chose to do that? Can you just do that? I think you can. And that makes good sense to you? Does everyone else agree that that's... Are you talking about getting right. them in an email 24 hours? Is that the process you're talking about? Yes. 
can I because for instance just you? just just for me just I'll, just yeah. for a second so I've been trying to make up my practice to come in at 430 so I can look at the orders right we come in at 430 there's stuff going on people have conversations going on the orders are getting passed around I never really get a chance to look over the orders and it's impossible for me to look at the orders when I'm trying to run the meeting and I don't think it's good practice to have our board members looking at the orders when we're trying to have the meeting because they should be paying attention to the meeting. Now the question is that we didn't talk about Dorinda is, uh, and I think I know the answer but I wanna know what you think, is what would happen is the orders would be sent out but the bills would not be. So if you had a question on a bill you need, or on an order and you needed to see the bill or you wanted to know something about the bill, you'd call the bookkeeper and say, can you pull out that bill from RB Technology and either email it to me or tell me what my, my question is. It's quite a bit of paper if we're going to email out copies of all the bills to everybody. So that's the one hitch about doing that. It's impossible to send out copies of the bills. That would just be a monumental right. time thing. Um, the other issue is, I mean, normally the process is the payroll tries to be completed by Monday, but the payables are done on Tuesday. Yep. If you're wanting everything done by Monday, then that is, Cheryl also handles the public coming in and all of that so yep. there is a real depending what there is on um, to process that day um, how long it'll take her to actually get it done well let's let's try and see how it goes but can that work for you guys if you have a question on a bill you call her and say if it's a if you want to see the whole bill she can scan it to you I mean, compared to the number of bills we have, we have relatively few questions. I'd, I'd sort of personally like to look at the fiscal bill, but I could do that here it's after the meeting. Problem. It's not going to be. It still can be in a. Yeah, I feel like to see it now, and you can still review it at that yeah. point. It, it, nobody says you know you can't. So. So the, the blue file would still be available. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Well, let's try it and see how it works and how people like it. It'll help me a lot because right now I feel like I really never get a chance to, to look at them and I sign them. But, you know, and it has often been said, signing the orders without reviewing them is not really doing anything. So I'm a bit concerned with the added ask on the town staff and their, you know, their capacity to get it done in a timely manner with with how they're producing it and maybe it's because I don't understand enough of the process but if we're asking them to speed up their process by say it's you know a day and a half to get us you know stuff a day in advance so that we can comment and all of that I guess I just want to be sensitive to the the ask on but here's their the, capacity but here's the real well. issue okay what they depend on is the people from the town Eric and whoever to get their stuff in in a timely manner. Right now, there's a lot of follow-up because people aren't submitting their time cards in a timely manner. They're not getting their stuff to her in a timely manner. And she's sitting there dialing for dollars trying to get the stuff. So our policy is gonna be, if it isn't here by such and such a time, either the bill isn't gonna get paid or heaven forbid somebody's, somebody's payroll is gonna get deferred to the next payroll. There's a due date when it needs to be submitted to the office. And if it gets here on that due date and she doesn't have to spend time calling them and badgering them to get their stuff in on time, and I don't know how frequently that occurs now, but I know it occurs some, um, I would think it would almost be easier. Yeah, as long as I mean, we it's hold- I mean, it's gonna take some time. As long as we well, hold we've true stick, to that. We've, right? gotta, we've gotta stick to our guns and be ready to stand up people and say, you know, I wasn't paid last week and I turned in, I only turned my time card in two days late. Well, guess what? Late is late. I mean, I, 
as it, long it as worked, you... It worked for a long time when we did it in the old days, and we had relatively few. Every once in a while, it was a little problem, but we had very few uh, problems that I recall. So I would say as soon as you can. doesn't have to be for the next meeting, but if you could sit down with her and, and set that up and maybe send a notice out to, to everybody who submits stuff to you advising them of the new uh, schedule, if that works. Bridget has a question. Yes, Bridget. I was wondering if um, uh, folks talked with Eric at all about the time card error that, was, um, that Randy found last meeting. And then to um, following up on that, I would almost think that the way I've done payroll is that if I don't have the information by the cutoff time, they just don't get paid. So that natural consequence really, um, it, it has a large impact. Um, I think that the town has to be ready to follow through with that. Um, if we say that you're not getting paid, if you don't get it in on time, you don't get paid. Um, two, I think that um, if rather than just have Dorinda speak with um, folks regarding payroll, um, that there be an actual meeting of sorts so that we can talk about expectations on our side, they can talk about their needs on their side, and everybody gets on the same page uh, because the consequences if they don't get it in are pretty significant for a family. So um, I think that maybe we formalize it a little bit. Yeah, Randy. I think the other piece of this is pretty assumptuous that uh, making assumptions that she's even sitting in that position anymore. Well, asking her yeah, to do this, asking her to do this. No, stuff no, no, with, I know. But 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 she did say once she was willing to continue this evening. So as much as that hasn't been formalized, I just want to say no, 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 call I, it out. No, I agree. I agree. Yeah, I think yeah. that the, the process needs to be put on paper and it with with a current date um, outlining um, exactly when, where, how. And um, if they fail, what'll happen? And that way everybody knows. I mean, I know that, I know that per se they know, but it, it's more, it just gives everybody an opportunity to, to understand the significance of it so that it isn't Dorinda chasing down time cards because that's miserable. Well, it definitely shouldn't be Dorinda chasing down time cards. Correct. Right. So, th so that's why I say I don't want to implement this without the proper proper communication. I don't know that we really need to have a meeting if we meet with committee heads and people understand. I mean, it's basically just changing a deadline. It's not changing any other procedure. I would but, be, I would be fine that maybe it's just put on paper. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh. Yes. Dorinda, sir. Yes. Um, to answer a couple of the comments, first of all, Cheryl normally reaches out if a time card isn't in as a courtesy. And I think it's just a matter of saying this courtesy will stop. That will just, and it's not, you know, it's not like it's a lot of people. It's the people who don't submit time cards on a regular basis. So I don't feel that it's their livelihood that's being right. affected. Right. Um, so I think we probably can handle it internally and just say, you know, we've got to have these and, you know, and handle it that way. Or how, who's ever sitting in that chair? Well, the other thing I would say, say, Dorinda, is at the select board's request, Right. We're implementing exactly. this change. This isn't some random thing that we came up with because of our workload. This is a request coming from the select board. And as far as the payables, we try to pay everything because it's only every two weeks. We try right. to pay because there's bills that come in that have discounts on them. Right. So we try to process up to the last minute that we possibly can. Um, but I think there's a way around that as well. And well. Again, what we used to do in the old days, right, wrong, or indifferent, 
is from time to time we would show up at a meeting and there would be a special order with just a couple of items on it were things that came in at the last minute. And because of a discount or just because of trying to be polite and, and pay a bill, uh, the anything, financial department. Anything that didn't go out in that original email batch. Right. I mean, we want to be, you know, we want to be good citizens. We want to be good to our vendors. We want to pay our bills. We certainly want to pay our employees. Um, but, you know, there's there's been concern about, about um, oversight, and I feel like I haven't been able to have the proper oversight because I, it's impossible for me to review the orders in an orderly manner. So. And the other question to um, Bridget's question is the change was made to the time card, paperwork was printed out and given to the appropriate department to take care of it. Yeah. And show the okay. change was made. And the other thing uh, I've noticed, and I know Randy's noticed, and others have who, who look at the time cards is it may be a time to have a little review with everyone about how you fill out time cards correctly. I mean, I look at some of those time cards and I can't even understand what they're putting down there. I mean, I understand the hours, but the rest of it's very confusing the way they're filling out those time cards. And I don't know if we can improve the time cards, if there's a better kind of time card or you probably you look at them more, more than anybody else, Randy. What do you think? I, I think my first suggestion would be to standardize them for all employees. Everybody's got just a spreadsheet that they use. Um, that would provide some clarity here. Um, absolutely. There's ways to make it more clear as to what you're looking at. Um, you know, it's it's... I'm not sure if the if the uh, highway department only uses paper copies or if they have it in an electronic format and then they just print that form out, but that's another way where we can automate some of the calculations that are going into those so that there aren't um, you know those those small errors that it's just like, oh, it's just a, a ma arithmetic issue or whatever. Um, so there's ways around it just. I guess it, you just got to figure out what the end goal is and if people are willing to make the change. Yeah. Well, the goal is to make it more accurate, more efficient, easier to understand for everyone, for the financial department, first of all, but for us also. And if it eliminates some of those pesky errors, that's a, that's a home run, so that's something. Maybe we can work on you can you can think about it a little bit. Uh, I've been in favor for quite a while of having some kind of automated system, but uh, I know the problems with that, and I don't know that the road crew really has access. I mean, not that they couldn't have access to the computer in the office, but they certainly don't have town computers. Yeah. But you know, you can do it these days. You can do time cards on your phone with those automated systems. You don't have to have a full-blown computer. So I don't know. I don't think that's I don't think that's an urgent priority, but I think to the extent that the time cards be an issue, it's worth looking at. Yes, Sarah. Whoever the key CEO is, um, I think that they uh, would like to speak. Okay, PCEO, who are you? Michelle Johnston. I'm on. Hi, this is Michelle Johnston. I'm on, on Brook Road. I just I just have a question with regards to time cards in people reviewing them and overseeing them how many employees does the town have where all these timesheets need to be reviewed meaning you have department heads that review them and then the time cards are given to the bookkeeper who secondly reviews them do you need that many people reviewing time cards when you have department heads to review them that should be overseeing their departments so you guys talk about time cards consistently. So I'm just wondering why that is and what the issue is with time cards when you have checks and balances, but why do you have so many? So I would say. So I would say. Somebody needs whoop. to mute. 
So I think it's this computer picking it up. I think it's. Try that. How's that? Yes. Better. Thank you, Randy. So the process generally is generally is that department heads review time cards, approve them, and submit them to the financial department. At the same time, uh, the financial department reviews them. You're correct. But they also get submitted in the orders to the select board. So uh, I would say the board has observed uh, errors, problems with the time cards. So have we been paying more attention to the time cards than we had in the past? Yes, we have. But you know what? You're right. I mean, it really shouldn't be necessary for three people to look at the time cards. Um, but that's, that all gets back to the situation of having the time cards filled out accurately in the first place, fi filled out in a format where the, I mean, as, as Randy said, it shouldn't, be, it shouldn't be the select board finding math errors on the time cards. That's not a good use. I don't think that's a good use of our time. But it's been a productive use of our uh, time. Hold on. He says whoop. we can't hear anything last two minutes on no. you. So it is whoop. when I muted this. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry about that, you guys. Apparently, we were on mute. Okay, am I back? Can you hear me now? All good down, Peter. Thank you, guys. Okay, sorry about that. Technology, it isn't only the time cards that are a challenge. Technology can be a challenge as well. Um, what I was saying is our practice has been that the department heads collect the time cards for their departments. They review them, submit them to the financial department. Financial department reviews them and makes up the order. And then the select board sees the order when they when they come to us. So yes, it's true. There are multiple layers um, looking over those time cards. But to the extent the financial department finds out errors on a regular basis, the select board, mostly Randy, thank you, Randy, uh, finds errors on a on a regular basis. This all gets back to the process of figuring out a better simpler, more accurate system to do the time card so we don't need those kind of checks and balances. I mean, we want to pay people correctly. We want to pay them the money they're entitled to. But we also, obviously, are managing the town resources, and we want to be sure we're paying people correctly. So your concern, I would say, is a, is a, is a valid concern, and it's, it's part of the other discussion about how we handle this whole issue. Does that answer your question? I'm sorry? She said thank, thank you. you. Oh, okay. Okay. Anything else, anyone? So where does that leave us, Dorinda? Maybe she needs to think about it. Okay. Um, I'm not trying to hold you over a barrel. I just, okay. I've got to be comfortable coming to the table and sitting them all everyone okay is there any questions that you have that are unanswered okay so you will get back to us i'll get back to you this week okay that's fine thank you very much thank you is there any other business we need to discuss tonight can i just ask a clarifying question we yes. did not we have not yet made any changes to the personnel policy on, no. on ours yet. So is that on the agenda for next? Yeah, okay, I just want to make sure because I wasn't here. Out of respect to you, okay, right. we wanted okay, you yeah. to be here. To, okay. So we do have an updated draft, and you have some language you're going to do, Sarah, right? For the no, overtime business? I'm not going to touch that overtime part. I decided I'm willing to take that back to you guys. That that. So we'll talk about to have that conversation. Okay. Again. All right. Yeah. I mean, at because the end that, of the that did not. I'm sorry. Okay. No. Go ahead. Finish. Um, I don't think that was a productive conversation. I couldn't really figure out in my minutes what was what you decided. It seemed to be that you wanted to wait until the full board was there. So 
why don't we guys, why don't we go over that again? Okay, that's fine. If that's okay with you, because I don't want to take it. No, 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 it's fine. I'm, I am uh, anxious to finalize the provisions to the personnel policy, but we can, I think we can do that at our next meeting. <clears throat> yes? I think Eric should be here anyways. Yeah. No, I know we weren't going to do it today. I just wanted to make sure, I, since okay. I, I did read the minutes, but it's, I just wanted to make sure that was on our next month's. Yep. Next, when is our next meeting? It's the week the 11th. The 11th. And then the following Tuesday, so two Tuesdays in a row. Yep. I think I have that on 11th and 18th. Yep. Oh, that's good. Sarah, do you have anything else for us? Do I? Yes, you. Okay. Thank you for your for your little speech. I appreciate it. Dorinda, take your time. If you have any questions for me or any of us, reach out. Um, I think you heard tonight that we're very concerned to try and straighten this out and make it so you can be comfortable and we can all be comfortable, not just you, everyone. Okay, but with that, I will... Uh, Adjourn tonight's meeting. Thank you all very much.